Hello, Internet Viewer. I'd like to play a game with you. But we've got no field to play it on. Luckily, there's an app for that. POW! Wally Basali, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, or can I call you Valdek? Valdek. Valdek is fine for me. It works pretty well. So you, you found that calling yourself uh, Valdek actually works better than... I didn't find it myself, actually. Just my friend, because Walid is a bit complicated. In Polish, it turns all the way to be valid, right? So they just came out, you know, like to Valdek, uh, from like a famous uh, Polish movie killer, you know, Kochanie yeah. Valdemar. So it just stick to me and uh, now I'm Valdek, right? So I'm, I'm okay with that. Now, I said hello, but I really should say bonjour. Bonjour. You're originally from France. How did you find yourself here in Poland? Uh, yeah, long story short, basically, my, my journey to to, towards Poland started in Romania uh, about six years ago. Decided to go study there. I met uh, my partner in life and in business, Dorota. Uh, <laughs> make, the la make the heart, it's traditional to make the heart symbol. Yeah, exactly. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really good at that, but all right, I can follow. And um, yeah, so basically I studied in Romania. She moved to Spain uh, for a year and then we got the opportunity to, uh, to start working in, uh, in Poland. So we moved together to, to Wuj. So we started with Wuj. Right? Shouts out to the witch crew. <laughs> yeah. What did you know about Poland before you came? Did you um, have any conceptions? Actually, not really. And I had like some kind of um, ideas about the country that, was re that were related to my travels. Because when I was in Romania, I didn't only study. Right? Yeah, I spent most of my time actually traveling around, but I, I, didn't, I didn't go to Poland during that, uh, that period. I didn't, so I just had this nice feeling about the area, saying like I loved Central and Eastern Europe. So I was like, Poland going to be exactly the same. Uh, so when I moved, I had no idea about how it was actually on the country. So and I chose Wuj, which is not that much of an international city to start with. Um, a little bit tough at the beginning to adapt and so on, right? You know, like uh, Poles have really their own character, own way to do things and so on. So it's not like other countries around that it's specific. So it took me some time to get used to it. Did you have any moments where you're like, mm, I'm not sure if this is the right place for me? And, Actually, <laughs> Dorota had that moment like before me because she's not from Wuj. And you know, like actually after a couple of months, she was like, I Let's just get out of here, right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, we stay. We decided to stay, so we, we decided to come, so we stay here. So finally, we stayed and we enjoyed it, and we ended up staying there like two years and a half before making our move to to, to Warsaw. So yeah, um, in and out was actually great, and now Warsaw just love it. Now it's time for the English question: What is it you do? What is it I do? Uh, basically, um, we, we have a startup with Dorota and with like other associates. We are in total eight working on the, on the company. And I would say I co-pilot the, the company. I don't like to give myself a title like CEO or CEO because basically we are gatekeepers at this level, right? You know, we do everything. Uh, uh, yes. We have hands on everything. Uh, each one of us has his own let's say, disciplines that is good at. Uh, Dorota will be rather on the legal accountancy, um, venue acquisition and so on. Uh, pretend I'm a very incredibly rich English investor right. and give me that 60 second lift sell. I'm not, by the way, I have no money, so please <laughs> do not contact me. This uh, is why I came for the interview, actually, you know? <laughs> ah, dang. Okay. I mean, so you, can, you can have the five zotes. Uh, <laughs> right. uh, it's all right, we, we discussed that after. <laughs> okay, so I, I, will try to, I will try to give it shortly. Basically, what we do is that we uh, realized that it was a big uh, available, f big amount of available f sport facilities here in Poland and in the Central Eastern Europe, but uh, they were mostly public, and but they were not managed properly, which means that to access them, it was extremely complicated uh, to, to, to get the schedules, to get the prices, the payment and so on. So we have created Ball Squad, uh, which is a system that helps the schools, the venues, OSIR, MOSIR and so on to manage those facilities uh, online with an online platform and the users basically to have access to those information, to directly book them online without having to contract them, without having to call the venues. So we work really closely with the local authorities to help them monetize on a higher scale their venues. Because presumably before they had no online booking system and you had to call a number and the number None one. whatsoever and everything was done pen and paper and everything was basically, if it was everything done on a word to mouth level and it's not normal at this level here in Poland where the technology is skyrocketing at this level uh, you have application for everything that venues are not accessible when they are right next to you and you still have to go and sign a contract physically and call people and that was just something that we couldn't like to book a 
a, a, for a sporting event or yeah. like, for, for anything for just team. to go play with your friends or something why would you have to basically sign a contract that uh, bind you by law for six or 12 months when you could simply go and book it and go play with your friend. It doesn't, it didn't make sense. Yeah. So that's the, uh, that's the problem we're trying to, to answer and that we are starting actually to, to answer for like a year now. Just give me a, a size, uh, a, a scale of the size here. We've got over a thousand sporting facilities. Where? Uh, that you guys have got right now on uh, Ball Squad, is that correct? No, we don't, we, we are not on the, on the, t on the thousand scale yet. But there are at least a thousand maybe plus. Oh, we, we have like, yeah, on, the, on our database, we have over a thousand that are available, but we are not connecting all of them because the thousand that we have on our uh, database are all across Poland. But actually there is over 36,000 available venues across Poland that are public facilities. I'm not talking about the private ones. Uh, but the one that we selected are the one that fit to our model at the moment. And we are focusing on the region of Warsaw because we want to scale our model in Warsaw uh, as being the main hub of Poland, right? To actually go on with the rest uh, of the country. So it's a stage by stage process, right? Stage by stage. Now, this uh, BullSquad.pl has been around for uh, just under a year, Yeah, I think. Exactly. You look quite relaxed and, and well slept. Yeah. <laughs> is really that normal for someone at 10 months in? But I, you know, there is like something that is silly, but when you like what you do, you know, and even if the days are stressful, you know, it's just like enjoyable every day because um, when I wake up in the morning, I basically have my list of tasks or whatever I have to do or meetings or emails that I have to answer to, but I do it for myself. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, I'm not doing it for someone else. I'm doing it for myself. So I have to enjoy what I do. And even if you have this pressure that if I don't do it, no one else is going to do it. But at the end of the day, you know that if it's a success, the success is for you and for the people that share that, you know, that, that project with you. So it's not like you're working for someone and you have this stress. So the stress is not the same, right? But yeah, I try to, to still have my eight hours of, uh, of sleep, right? <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for Walid's top tip. What would your advice be to somebody who, I don't know, let's say was coming to Poland to set up a startup for some reason, or maybe was in Poland and thought, hey, I've got an idea. What do I do next? Uh, what I do next? Uh, first of all, I would, I, I would say to that person to research the market that, he, he, and I think it, it's, it's for everyone that will start, uh, that wants to, to have a startup, is that most of the time the, the new startuppers have an idea and the ideas are amazing, most of the time, right? Yes. And on paper they look great, but there is no research behind it. And for example, Ball Squad, before to uh, come to life, it took us five years because the idea started in Romania. Ah. And after Romania, I have traveled around and I checked the idea in different countries, in Czech Republic, in Slovakia and so on. And we discovered that the problem was quite similar. So after that, when we arrived to Poland, it took us two years and a half of research to make sure that basically our idea was fitting to the local markets. And so this is the, the, the biggest tip I would give to anyone that is starting something because the data, is, um, most, the data is not available all the time. So you have to go look for it. So for example, in our case, Dorota has set for over 10 months, calling day by day schools and venues and talking to them every day to make sure that what we were proposing made sense for them and our product was actually viable on the long run. Uh, so that would be my, my, my biggest tip is like research what you're doing and on a market like Poland where all the data is not all the time available, it's still a market that needs a structure, right? Uh, don't be discouraged, you know, just go for it and, you know, knock two doors and there is no door that remain, you know, shut all the time, right? You know, we have like people that basically shut the door at us and right now that we are showing results, the door is reopening, yeah. right? So it's just a matter of keep pushing there. Hey, you, working on a crazy great business idea with very little research and maybe just a little bit of Googling. Stop right now. Listen to Wally. That's crazy because, you know, so many people are like, no, nah, Googling. Yeah, I see there's like, you know, mega top line numbers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I run with my idea and six months later, I'm, I'm in like a bad place, you know yeah. what I mean? You guys have got financing already. Uh, we got the financing actually, and we got the financing from the very beginning as a pre-seed before to start, because we are business people and we came with the idea and the whole structure and the whole research, which was the biggest chunk, but we didn't have any technical person with us, right? So basically we needed financing to create the tool itself, right? To create the management system, to create the, the app for the user to, to, to use, uh, to make the bookings. So we needed technology uh, structure and we had the financing from the very beginning from um, a software house, DataXDev, that saw the project, believed in it, and basically told us, okay, let's do it together, right? So we started that journey with them within our uh, company which is really good for us because it enables us all the time to have um, to be really flexible in our development 
if we have feedbacks from users, we can change right away. Uh, it's not only about the money. The most important for us was to show that uh, there is a value to do something like that. And those guys basically joined us uh, at that moment saying, okay, you have the value, we have the technology, let's do something together. Now, so often in those discussions, you can see there's a good synergy, but then something kind of like doesn't work. Let's say one company suddenly gets a big new order from somewhere else and the relationship falls apart. Because th these guys are Ukrainian development mm -hmm. company, if I remember. Exactly. How do you manage that international relationship to make sure it's working on a day-by-day -day basis? Uh, trust. That's, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, uh, those guys, because we love this relation and even more now in Poland because there's a lot of money in Poland at the moment. I think you know that with all the Polish funds that have been released and so on. So we love that relation startup investor, but it's not how we see it. We don't see the relation startup investor. What we see is that if you put your money or if you put your resources or time within our project, it becomes your project. So at the end of the day, uh, if you don't follow through when there is like bad times, uh, when we, we need a need like a bigger push or something, we are not the only one losing. You mm. are losing, mm. right? Either you are losing money, or you have lost your time, or you have lost your resources. So this is the the relation that you have established from the very beginning with them, uh, and it was not always you know like uh, smooth. Some conversations were tough, but at the end of the day, we understand each other and we trust each other that. They take care of the technology. We are here to take care of the business and show uh, progress. They show progress and we synchronize on that. Man, this guy's dropping some serious <laughs> truth bombs. But now it's time for the quick fire round. DJ, cue the music. <laughs> Buddy, favorite place in Poland? Um, favorite place in Poland? I would say Trojny Miasto region. Gdansk, Sopot, uh, Gdynia. Interesting. Worst place in Poland? Oh, no, don't take me there. I'm not answering that. Probably the same place, but different, like, stop up uh, the model. Uh, okay. Favourite place in Warsaw? Uh, Favourite place? Ah, Tsutna Wisła. But unfortunately, I think there is some troubles with that. But uh, that's definitely my favourite spot here. Summer's coming, baby! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Favourite Polish food? Uh, Golonka and Jurek. Interesting. Thing in, from France that you most miss here? From France? Yeah. Um, I would say the, the ah, it's going to be like super stereotypical here. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of uh, cheese, like as a French guy. So I'm really missing that I go to any store and I get like great cheese because when I do that here, it costs me a lot of money. Yes. I'm not a millionaire yet, so you know <laughs> I cannot afford it every day. I, I, I am. I cannot resist the urge now to inform Wally that Great Britain, the United Kingdom of Great Britain, has more types of cheese than France. Oh yeah, that's a hell of a truth bomb you got there. <laughs> All right. If you were president for one day, what one thing would you change about Poland? Oh, dang. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a very tough question. Uh, yeah, you are stressing me with that, right? I'm stressing <laughs> yeah, you. Totally, wow. I totally. I had a, <laughs> had a, yeah, yeah, I had a sweating and so on. You know no, that microphone's also heart monitored. I, I, so I will basically leave politics to, 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 to the people that know how to, to do that. Right? Oh, he dodged the question. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Best time in Poland? Uh, I would say the moment that we moved from Łódź to Warsaw. That was definitely uh, a great moment for us because Dorota was taking a leap forward in her career, me as well, uh, discovering a new city, a new challenge. So that was really a great time for us uh, in Poland. I would keep that. Toughest moment? Toughest moment? Oh, the beginning in Łódź. Oh man, that was, that was a tough moment. Cultural shock. Oh, totally. And it, you know, I was just not expecting that, right? I was coming from a year and a half of uh, traveling, seeing people super open and so on, and I just dived into uh, professional life. Uh, in a tough city, so all my world was kind of shifted from one point and I had to understand how poles were working. And we know how, how poles are, you know, they, they are distant at the beginning, they give you this cold shoulder and you have to make your way through and I was not used to that. So that was tough, yeah, it took me about three, four months. DJ, cut the quickfire round. <laughs> okay, well, I have to say, this was one of the most interesting interviews I've done for mm -hmm, uh, quite a long time. Uh, what one thing do we not talk about that you would like to talk about that you think is interesting for investors, startups, business owners, French people en, en Pologne? <laughs> uh, one thing, I, I, would, I would talk about uh, the relation, and I think I just mentioned a little bit before, is that in Poland right now there is a lot of money right uh, for startups so anyone that wants to make a startup that is related to this market or uh, want to expand from here is a great place to be uh, because there is money there is skills 
The problem is uh, that relation between how this money is distributed and the, the, the um, how the investors are relating to that money. Yes. Uh, and this is something that basically is a bit misguided in my sense, seeing it from inside the market, right? That there isn't, there is a lot of money, so it should be way more kindness into that process, right? And isn't, it's not really the case, right? You have to still do it the old fashioned way where we are still applying KPIs and other um, corporate values into the startup world when it's related to the investment process. So we are more into a hype than actual support for growth. Uh, we have, uh, there is something that I see all the time on LinkedIn and other social media, what's going to be the next Polish unicorn or what's going to be the next unicorn of Central and Eastern Europe. And this is something that really disturbed me because why chasing unicorns? So it means that you're going to invest in 1000 startups, hoping that 999 of them are going to fail and get return from one unicorn, but hugely. Why not invest in 1000? and hope that 900 of them do pretty well and get returned from 900 of them. Stop chasing that unicorn, right, when you actually have the skills to develop a business that would work on a long run. Oh, dude, I think we just worked out the title for this episode. <laughs> that was a hell of a truth bomb at the end of High Polska. Well, you've been an awesome guest. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Remind us where we can find your business and you as well. Uh, uh, Ballsquad.pl, actually, simply. Uh, and if anyone from the public authorities see that, you can directly contact us uh, through the social media on LinkedIn, Walid Borsali and or Dorotat Saban. Merci beaucoup. Mais de rien, c'était un plaisir. Make sure that you share this episode with anyone who was interested in Walid's story. I've got to say it was fascinating. Truth bombs flying at me from every single corner of this planet, le planète. Oh, I, I don't think he liked it when I talked about the cheese thing. He didn't like that. No, maybe we can cut that out. Let's see. Uh, so make sure you share this episode and indeed check out all the other fascinating discussions with fascinating people about fascinating businesses in the fascinating country of Poland. See you later for the next episode of High Polska. Pow! <laughs>